Hey everybody and welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank and I'm with Jonathan. Hey hey y'all. And this is one of our call-in episodes so it may not be to the standards you're used to but we hope you enjoy it either way. Uh, today we're talking about Lion King and next episode which will be coming out Monday night probably will be all about Comic-Con. We have a big Comic-Con episode coming up but we thought let's get this Lion King one out now. Everybody's real hot on that. Let's get this out there. Uh, th we won't go over the storage because it's the Lion King and I mean for the most part Jonathan would you agree that they pretty much stuck with the story yeah I hope if you're listening to this because you saw the title Lion King then you know the story you've probably seen the old one plenty of times so Sorry. yeah if you haven't stop what you're doing go watch the movie then come back and check us out story wise this thing is like it, it's it's insanely similar to the point where even the score is the same and to where like you, you could like name the song not name the song but you know okay this is when they entered this song from the old animated one they use the same exact score the whole time. Yeah. You, you can anticipate the what same. steps coming next in the story because they follow the same yeah. like storyboard pattern. Small things like the Rafiki stuff was slightly different, but the fact that Rafiki is still like the one that says, hey, you need to go back, is still there. Yeah. Um, Story-wise, was there any, did you have any complaints about the story? Because it's something we've seen before. It's basically Hamlet, if you guys didn't know that. Lion King's based off Hamlet. Yeah. Um, it's the, the story of Hamlet. The small changes in the story that they made they just none of them seem to improve it at all you know like like they changed some of Rafiki's role and stuff like uh, to me it's just if you're gonna make a change it needs to be something that improves the the story or the the movie but they just seem to kind of matter well they weren't significant changes but not worth having made I think what kind of changes can you think of off the top of your head uh, I'm trying to remember see, some of the big ones this is why I should have been taking notes during the movie I did like how uh, it wasn't just Timon and Pumbaa for the most part it was Timon and Pumbaa taking care of Simba when he was a kid mm -hmm. but there was like a couple other animal friends there yeah that was cool that showing was that it's like nice. a community uh, that can yeah. coexist and stuff and it's not just that relationship between you know Timon and, P Timon and Pumbaa that are the prey and Simba that's the lion but it's a whole yeah. community of you know creatures that could be eating each other and stuff that coexist so that was that was a good change and i really did like seth rogan as uh pumba that was hilarious oh yeah him and i think it's bill eichner mm -hmm. uh both amazing I'll, I'll get his name for sure uh they both did a really good job as timon and pumba they were they stole the show every time they were on screen i was laughing they were hilarious i really really liked them that yeah. was cool but their little the song to distract the hyenas what was up with that they don't even start it they just start running Remember? Well, they, they started a little bit of it, but the, the joke was the fact that it was... So instead of being the, the hula song, which was ad-libbed back in the day, mm -hmm. they did Be Our Guest from uh, Beauty and the Beast. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, but they, they didn't even know they started. They were about to, and they started to flee. Well, yeah, he. Uh, I, well, I, I did like the part that, his that they did was, like the, uh, the luminaires, like... Um, yeah, Maitre d' introducing you know, them kind of thing. That was kind of cool. So you like right away, like, oh my God. But yeah, they kind of cut us short, you know, yeah. you know leaving us wanting more. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, so the other story thing I wanted to bring up, I think is really important mm -hmm. is uh, in the original Scar has like this pack of hyenas that basically work for him. And he's going to be like, look guys, I'm going to bring you this new future. I'm going to make sure you guys are all well fed and stuff like that. And he's kind of their, their leader. He's going to be the one that, that brings him forward. And this one, the big difference is they have a leader. They have a hyena leader. Scar comes to them and is more like, hey, guys, work with me and I'll make sure you guys are fed. But it's not so much as a leader. It's more as a schemer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's going. I didn't he's like hiring a band of mercenaries to, to work for him is what it felt like. Yes. So here's my here's my theory. OK, or this, here's my thoughts on this. I compare the two. This scar that we got felt like Littlefinger. The scar that we had before was Daenerys. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah, and I could see that. One that came in and just knew how to conquer, not know how to roll. Rule, roll, rule was the old one. This one we had was a schemer that came in, was never fully in charge, it felt like. Like, yeah, you had the lion pride, but you could tell, like, the lady that was running the hyenas is also, like, a huge player in that that dynamic. I don't know. I just It took so much away from, from Scar to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's if you didn't give that cool. lead, lead hyena the authority role... I think it would have been a little bit better. It would have made him seem empowered or as more of a yeah. threat. I think that's the problem is he wasn't much of a threat. Uh, he didn't seem... Another thing that's I didn't true. care for so much in this movie is that they didn't seem to be... With CGI and stuff, which the CGI was beautiful, but they didn't seem to convey emotion. I mean, of course, not nearly as much as the cartoon ones where the lions can do whatever you want them to. Uh, right. They're trying to make it as realistic as possible, but 
the you know sad stuff aside from you know Mufasa dying but anything else you know oh, you can't God. see the sorrow in their face and you can't see the joy or the anger it's just really kind of hard to read a lion's face like that so do you have okay so I'll, I'll say this right now that Mufasa death scene still hit me hard oh yeah yeah, yeah. Not, it, it's over. amazing that after all these years and it's funny because as soon as Mufasa jumps from the goalie onto the side of the rocks it dawned on me like this is the first movie I've seen in theaters like the original Lion King <laughs> yeah. is the first time we went to the theaters to see Lion King. And I was like, I remember seeing this in theaters and it like changing my life. <laughs> like yeah. when I was a kid, it was crazy to see this death scene. Um, and so th- that part where he's jumping on the side and you're just like, you know, the fate of, of, of Mufasa. We've seen these movies so many times mm-hmm. and still you're rooting for him. Uh, but that was a good moment where, okay, so let's start, let's shift over from um, storyline into the acting I would say my biggest complaint for the acting would be they should have kept Jeremy Iron as, as Scar. They had um, Chiwetel Ajafor. God, I can never remember his name. He's an amazing actor. Uh, you've seen him in a lot of like MCU stuff and stuff like that. But yeah, he he plays Scar and he just doesn't get that like conniving, truly evil lion. Yeah, he seems just like less cool in that sense. So for a good example is when Scar puts his claws into Mufasa and tells him long live the king. It's a, it's a matter of, Oh, long live the king and throws him off. Or when you got Jeremy iron, that's like whispering in there, like yeah. long live the king, like whispering yeah. it into him and, and it, then throwing him off. You're just like chills through your bones, you know? Yeah. The same thing again, when they mirror that with Simba nearly falling off and he whispers, I killed Mufasa to him. That, it, that's such yes. a powerful moment, but that it, you're probably right. I was thinking it was a lack of, emotion that you can see in the character but it could also be just straight acting he wasn't able to really act that the words as emotionally as they need to be to really impact you like that i i mean, yeah I, I can't think of it i mean I think the rest of the casting was pretty solid i mean again timon pumba nailed it that yeah. is billy eichner I was, and we were talking about and then seth rogan they, they killed it mm-hmm. uh nala did good for her role nala did yeah that was beyonce yeah. boy i always <laughs> imagine like all these other actors are like ha- hanging out. Cause there was an interview with John Oliver recently who plays Zazu. I love John Oliver. Um, and he was doing this. He was, they were talking about how there's this big group picture of the entire cast, but there's one person who couldn't make it to the shoot because she's too freaking huge. And that was Beyonce who plays Nala. And it's kind of clear. You could sell in the picture. She's like Photoshopped in. Um, and so I'm imagining like when they're all doing their voice acting, like they all know each other. And then they're just like, Oh, Nala's calling in her lines. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> let's just Photoshop in some lines for Nala. But yeah, Beyonce did really good there. Uh, any other standouts you saw in the voice acting? Um, gosh, I don't know. We had John Oliver again playing Zazu. That was, I think, that was perfect. I think he was born to play, a, you know, yeah, a whiny th- assistant. <laughs> I Zazu should have been a little bit bigger though. It seemed like in the original movie he was. Maybe it's because it'd be more realistic, but he seemed like yeah, a tiny yeah. little, you know, I don't know, tiny bird. I think that's it. I think they were just trying to be a little more realistic as much as they could be. Yeah. We had James Earl Jones come back as Mufasa, which always good, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's amazing. I didn't. But even, I, think I didn't even that, realize that. Yeah, that's the original Mufasa voicing uh-huh. Mufasa, which is another reason to have Jeremy Irons voice Scar. Why not have the two originals right there? You know, right? he's not retired, is he? <laughs> no, Jeremy Irons. No, he's a, he's way better health than James Earl Jones. Oh is. yeah, I'm sure. Uh, we had John Kanai play Rafiki. Good job. Yeah. Alfred Woodard did uh, Sarabi, which is Mufasa's wife. She's amazing. She's mm-hmm. good in everything she does. Uh, let's see. Anything else we had? We had uh, J.D. Makari did Young Simba, which did fine work. It actually kind of sounded like Jonathan Taylor Thomas a little bit. Yeah. The original. Remember him? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of, I'm looking through some of these bigger names. We'll pick them up. We had Keegan Michael Key and Eric Andre were the two hyenas that were like, you're too close to me, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a cute little like ongoing joke throughout the whole uh, movie yeah and then chance the rapper rapper played uh bush a uh, little bush baby which that's i can't believe the chances of the rapper in there and he didn't they didn't make a bigger deal out of him who's, but who's generally the little bush else. baby yeah i can't even remember that i don't remember a little bush baby a little like a uh, monkey thing mm-hmm. i don't remember that character yeah hmm. maybe it's one it of them chance the rapper with, it must have been one of them that was with timon and pumbaa right? must have been yeah but then they should have been more prominent he's yeah. too awesome so yeah 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 and then there's like a little guinea fowl that was played by amy sedaris again another really great voice actor friend of uh colbert and stuff like that wasn't bigger role hmm. yeah so i think really the acting did good i would say recast scar other than that i mean it was pretty good voice yeah. acting yeah i agree what about the 
directing now this is one of the bigger deals we've talked about in the past this is directed by john favreau who did iron man and uh, he did the original jungle book that's why they wanted to make sure he did this because you know the cgi work he was familiar with that before were there any shots or anything like that that really just grabbed you that they think they did really well maybe some that they did bad hmm not there's none that i can think of that stand out um uh, gosh i overall i was there was something about the movie that just seemed off to me i just didn't really I don't know. I didn't get into it like I, I did the original one. And yeah. I, I'd hate to put it on John Favreau because he's a great director. But I mean, I imagine if somebody was to make the changes to fix it, it'd be him. Um, I can't give John Favreau too much credit for this movie because I feel like they're retelling the first movie too closely. And yeah. I think it's one of those things where, okay, guys, we can't deviate too much because it's freaking Lion King. Like if it was, Jungle Book is a good example. If it's Jungle Book, you guys could kind of stretch a little bit because it's just Jungle Book. Yeah. Lion King is probably the peak of the Disney the '90s Disney Renaissance, so they really can't mess this one up because it's it's kind of the biggest one of the '90s. Yeah, uh, you know, they, yeah, they can't mess it up. There was actually a couple scenes I forgot. I I, <laughs> I forgot I have notes in front of me. Um, <laughs> one thing I didn't care for was kind of kind of just didn't feel right. Didn't wasn't smooth or anything to me. Was Simba's aging scene where he got with Timon and Pumbaa and he was just a little cub and then they're singing the song yeah. and he gets older. You see him young in CGI, you see him as a teenager in CGI and then it goes cuts into, it looks like the original movie scene with them walking across the log, the bridge. Yeah. And he's, you know, older. He, you know, becomes a, a full grown adult and then mm -hmm. it just cuts back to the full CGI again. So that seemed like that was spliced in very sloppily or it just didn't fit. Like if you're going to do that, you just, just yeah. remake that scene with a modern quality you know animation or or spice and more of it i don't know something make it smooth it was a cgi version of the original though like uh, they it looked they did that a lot of times where they they made they just redid the exact same shot over and again over again they did that a lot to this film matter of fact the opening and the ending are both cgi shot for shots of the original yeah, following but that, that was one of them thing. yeah well yeah even that was yeah it was like that was an extended version but basically the same exact thing um, but that was a shot for shot where they went like across the log and you see him aging and they're doing that part of the song. Yeah. But so they uh, didn't start with him walking across the log. They do like they show him. I mean, they're all singing and, and walking and stuff. But then it, when it changes, it changes from CGI to I mean, I guess CGI, but that that, that silhouette scene. Yeah. And it I don't know. To me, it was just it wasn't a smooth transition. That seemed that kind of took me for a surprise. Yeah, I can see that with a silhouette. A lot of times the shadows don't work well, and on CGI, shadow is your enemy. Like, like playing with lighting is is the problem with CGI. So if you're going to be changing it so harshly like that, it would look bad. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, uh, uh, the song. I will hopefully we'll just go through a bunch of songs in a minute. But um, yeah, Mufa or not Mufasa, Scar's song. Oh, uh, be prepared. That was a, an utter disappointment. That was hardly so sung was. at all, and it just. Re kept repeating be prepared be prepared be prepared be prepared like you took my favorite song from the movie the original and just made it like a like two or three notes almost it felt like yeah like he just sang like that opening part of the song because like hey we need to make sure we say be prepared for this whole thing yeah and again because of the power dynamic it's totally different the original one you had this guy who's got this secret army and they're all marching and it's showing the unison and it's, you know, it's meant to show like a dictator yeah. to Scar. It shows his power. Exactly. And now you have this thing where he's like, listen to me, follow me. And he's like creepily climbing up the rock, which we later see on he's doing that with, with Mufasa when he's escaping. So you're right yeah. there negating how powerful that looks. And everybody's like not going up there, ascending with him. They're just watching this dude do this. Like it would be undercut very quickly with the, the, the female lead, um, hyena saying no we're good thanks yeah. and he would just be this lion that's visiting you know right. it's not like he's in charge of them at all at that point so yeah. it was really well it wasn't well done and the song was kind of meh and you know? for his character they never showed him feeding the hyenas they showed him at the end when he's feeding on right. one and he he leaves it and they they attack it but in the beginning that was his bargaining chip his his power over the hyenas was i feed you so you owe me your loyalty and then with that he you know promised them to, their bellies would be full and he would give them the kingdom pretty much uh but I, I will give them this though they did explain the fact that the reason everything goes bad is because they're over hunting which the original didn't do that's true but so they would at least have a reason for it, it wasn't like oh scars in charge now so let's just change the weather no it's because over hunting which is breaking that circle of life but you gotta see he also 
in during his rule, he got, he got the raw end of the stick because there was a drought. He can't his overhunting doesn't doesn't uh, dry up the rivers, doesn't affect the water, doesn't kill all the vegetation. But they're well, eating I think, all. I think they're the eating idea, all the herbivores. I, well, I, I understand that, but I think the idea is it's it's breaking that circle of life. So somewhere it's affecting it. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't yeah. see it because we're we're just a part of the circle. But when you overhunt, you mess this part up, mess this part up. So that's I think that's the idea is that you're messing up the circle of life, so it will affect everything else, and then the part that feeds you back is no longer there. Like you're you're throwing things off, so eventually it'll mess up that whole circle. That's what I had taken away from it. Taken yeah, away from that it. makes sense. I, but yeah, it's not well done. Yeah, I mean, as soon as <laughs> does it, as soon as the battle goes on, oh hey, finally there's rain and we got the new king and everything's gonna start to turn green. It's like yeah, but hey, the last year that I've been here or several years, I don't know how long how much he aged, but uh, yeah, all these years that I've been here, it's just been dry and everything's been dying. So of course we're running out of animals to eat. Of course the hyenas are eating everything because every everybody's dying from a lack of uh, water and vegetation. But yeah, that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> The uh, two shots I want to, before we leave uh, John Favreau, because again, I don't want to give too much credit because this is basically a remake, but mm. uh, there was this one shot in the beginning where we're seeing uh, Simba, young Simba, talking to Scar, and he's on the line, or on this like little rock, and he's saying, like, I'll be t- giving you orders and stuff like that. When before, I want to say in the original, Scar was like laying there lazily eating off a bone, which was so classic Scar. But in this mm. new version, we have Scar standing behind uh Simba and then the the focus shifts so that Scar's a little blurry and Simba's talking and then after he makes the joke about I'll be giving you orders it shifts over to Scar and he's like yeah isn't that something and I, to me it felt like so ominous I was like that was a really well done choice for a shot you know would you, yeah. did you catch that one at all yeah and and you're right now that I think about it that was a little more uh of his character than just lounging around because uh in the original I'm pretty sure he said more or less the same thing like then I'd have to give you orders. That'd be weird, huh? And then Scar says, yeah. "You have no idea." But that's yeah. that, that's the same conversation they're having. But that perspective does show, like his, you know, he's like lurking over his shoulder, and uh, yeah, yeah, that shows his a little bit more of a intent. threat, like yeah. a like a foreshadowing threat kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. The other shot I want to give a quick shout out to, and it was one I was kind of worried about, is Cloud Father. And when when Simba's at his wit's end, adult Simba, and he's going to the to the pond, and he's looking up to the clouds after Rafiki tells him, like, "Come this way, I'll show your dad's li- alive." Yeah. He looks up to the cloud and he sees his dad. Originally, he just literally saw his dad in the clouds, which yeah. has been parodied many times. This time, there was a storm going on, and there was like a lightning outline that made uh, like a lion's face, which, if I'm not mistaken, straight up made the the old. Mufasa's face though like that's what I was seeing in it um but did you like how they handled that or how it, or would you handle it differently I, I wish there was a little more to it in the in the original first you see Mufasa in the clouds and then he takes like right. a full glowing yellow presence so I yeah. would have preferred to at least see him in the clouds but just being the lightning outline I, I kept trying to get a glimpse to see it clearly because I was like is that what they're doing I can't really tell like you can't see a clear, you know, face out of it. It's when the lightning strikes, you can see the the face of, of Mufasa. Yeah, it was only in the lightning strikes. Yeah. So I, it was it was cool. I mean, it's a good good visual effect and everything. But I would have probably made it a little more clear. I think it because because this version of Lion King, they made sure to take steps to make things a lot more realistic. For example, well, we'll go over the songs, but uh, when I am a king or whatever that name of that song is, was very much more realistic this turnaround than it was in the other version. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't want to just show like a cloud daddy. But, but clouds sh- taking the shapes of things is a lot more realistic than lightning shaping things, right? Well, but the thing is, is if it's if the idea that you can't quite see it, like you're saying, yeah, kind of shows the fact that it's not necessarily Simba's looking up and seeing his dad. It's that he's looking up and remembering his dad's words. And his dad said, "Look to the skies and you'll see me." It'll be much. It's much more of like metaphor. Like, oh, now I see what my dad wanted out of me. Uh, now I'm hearing my dad. So I, I don't think it's necessarily he's like literally talking to his dad. Yeah. I think he's finally remembering who he is, which is the son of Mufasa. Uh, and and so that's what we're seeing. We're, so for us, we're meant to just barely see it because it's not to us. It's to Simba. Yeah. You know. I get you. It's not like an open conversation between him and the clouds. It's him reflecting on his father's words and right. what would my dad. Which do? is why he looks at the pond first like look he's in you type of thing was Rafiki was trying to show him that hmm. um, any other points you want to bring out real quick before we move on to songs there was another scene that just bugged me I, I hate to keep putting the movie down because it was a good movie it's based on a great movie um, yeah that's the problem right there based on a great movie yeah 
Um, but the journey of Simba's hair, that I think they stretched that out a lot more than it needed to be. When okay, I think him and Nala were playing, and his his hair, you know, went into the wind, and then it made its way to oh, Rafiki. Oh, that was so dumb. Yeah. Oh my god, that was so dumb. It made its way to Rafiki. Like it, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it was hair or just pollen or something like that in the first one, but it it just went through the wind, and then Rafiki found it, and then he mashes it into the the bowl and realizes it's from Simba. Yeah. But this, so again, they're trying in... to take away the, like the magic because originally yeah. it was kind of like Rafiki just felt him and everything like that. Yeah. But yeah, this was so dumb. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. He saw he saw like uh, leaves dancing in the wind or something like oh. that. No, it was that like stuff he'd mixed together. Remember, and he put it in a bowl and he's like and he's like reading it like it's the news, which was kind of cool. I like that because he was like oh, eating a a plum right. or something like that and they're like going through the things like oh okay the hippos are traveling north like he's just reading the news or whatever and they're like what what's this Simba's alive <laughs> I loved that part. that's right that's right gosh so, yeah because it was part of the leaves he grabbed it threw it in his mixture like oh let me see what's going on with yeah. you know today's get, report get the, thing. the fresh vibe off the street kind of thing it was... which would have been cool because we've been seeing Zazu giving the reports to the lions it would have been cool if like Rafiki sitting again I'm thinking of Game of Thrones but like he had little birds that would come by and be like chirp 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 oh, okay yeah. so that's what's going on in the south chirp 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 Simba's alive <laughs> you know yeah that would have been I don't know or they because they're trying to make it more realistic they bring they bring the branches with the berries and he mashes them and reads what it says something like yeah. that yeah but something like that yeah, this whole the hair it traveled to I mean went a bunch of places then a giraffe ate it and pooped it out and then some bug pushed yeah. it and then it broke open Dung beetle. And, flew away it's, oh my god just too much it was really way too extended yeah <laughs> and really there's dumb. so many other scenes that seemed completely rushed that it just kind of hurried up and, and skipped through it's like why would you rush other scenes or make them seem shorter than they need to be when this is you know a whole minute you could probably cut out or two minutes so, yeah i don't know it was it that was, was kind of rough. rough all right uh let's go ahead and get into songs then yes okay so let's go over the songs here real quick uh again we had the the original uh song for the movie the circle of life which mm -hmm. was shot for shot uh you know remake it was just great there's nothing yeah. you can't go wrong when you're just doing the same thing over again yeah so that was good um uh what's it i want to be king i think it's what it's called right his when yeah. simba is out there with the kids oh he's the other i just can't wait to be king that's it thank you very much i knew it was right yeah so what did you think of that song how well they did that um i i don't know it, it was all right I, I kept expecting them to jump on each other's shoulders and stuff like the original one. Yeah. But yeah. like you're saying, they're trying to be more realistic. So it was just them kind of bobbing and weaving and dodging between the other animals. Um, it was it was okay. I, I didn't like it as much as the original one, but it was pretty good. In the fact they're trying to make it more realistic than yeah, it was, it was good. I did like the fact that as he's running around, the, little, the kids of each of the species joined in. Yeah. So <laughs> it's kind of like the new era is like the oh the new era is going to be a lot more lighthearted maybe um i don't know i just kind of maybe i was looking into it too much but they did have like the baby elephant was with them and the baby this and the baby that yeah. baby zebra stuff yeah, like, like that. So that to get cool. it to escape from the parents kind of thing yeah 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 <laughs> uh we had be prepared which again just total terrible another thing i didn't like is at one point finally i saw a little bit of steam coming from the rocks so i thought he was going to jump on a rock and it's going to shoot up steam Nope, they yeah. didn't have any of that. Like you could, that that stuff's practical. That could be real. I mean, lions yeah. aren't intelligent enough to know that, but these ones are talking, so we can fudge those numbers. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing too. Yeah, they're trying to be realistic, and yet you're like that scene when like the the rocks are rising up and scars on. I mean, it's so yeah. freaking cool. It's so they even had the part where he's howling into the moon, like the original, but it's not this uh, roaring into the moon. Yeah. But it's not the same the way it was done. Yeah. Yeah. That was just missed opportunities right there. It's crazy. Uh, okay, so Akuna Matata I thought was 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 really well done. Yeah. How did you like Akuna Matata? Yeah, I liked it. Aside from that aging, like we talked about, but the song itself, yeah. and uh, I like how they had all the other little characters in there. It was funny. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, on the aging thing though, I liked the quick joke after towards the end of the song where he's like still singing and to Manu <laughs> we're talking about like. <laughs> You, yeah. you gained 400 pounds since we started this song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really cute. Because they're like, okay, like we got to we gotta end this song. And he's like, no, no, let's go a little more. He's like, dude, you've gained 400 pounds since we started. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> we've been singing for 10 years kind of thing. That was, that was great. Yeah. Um, what was the other songs? There was uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? But this one was, instead of Elton John, was performed by both uh, Donald, Donald Glover and Beyonce, which, of course, is adult Simba and Nala. Yeah. I liked it, too. I, I thought, thought that was a really good yeah. rendition of it. I thought they did a good job. By the way, the complete soundtrack is up for streaming. So if you have Spotify or whatever like that, you can listen to the entire Lion King sound soundtrack and subscribe to Geek Freaks. It's just saying. While you're at it, yeah, why not? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, any any other anything about the music you want to talk about after that? I mean, the score was the same from the original, pretty much. Uh, I think the music was there, pretty much the same as. So there before. was one original song. I don't know, I don't know what it's called, but it's when uh, Simba was was uh, running after Nala to return to Pride Rock. You're right. Yeah. I just I don't I didn't really care for it though. It didn't really feel. I, I don't think they even got into it very much. It wasn't a very long song. Uh, but yeah. it just wasn't wasn't memorable. But it's good to see they tried something. I liked in the Aladdin movie that just came out. They actually had a couple, you know, original songs. They didn't try to shoehorn them in, <laughs> but they felt kind of comfortable in the story. Uh, this one just I don't know. They didn't put a lot of focus on it, but like if you're gonna try something yeah. original, make you know, make something good and original. But that's okay. If you wanna just didn't have a song to put there or something like that, you could just I don't know. It was alright. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's. I think it was okay. Exactly. It was performed by Beyonce, so we got to get as much Beyonce in as we can. Yeah. She's expensive. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Let's just go. We'll talk real quick about that last fight scene because I want to make sure we end on that. Uh, I noticed that they did do the slow motion because in the original they had like slow motion smacks across the face. Yeah. This they did a realistic version of that where they did like slow motion attacks from each scar and and uh, uh, Simba. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Um, but oh. the last thing I want to mention personally is mm-hmm. when Scar is is doing this and he's, he's you know he feigns his weakness so that he can throw things into Simba's face and then later on when he's thrown down and being attacked by the hyenas the fact that he's not their leader and he's just like basically hiring them changes that dynamic so much from the yeah. hyenas point of view because yep. originally it was all like the hyenas realizing that they don't need this guy that you know he's they're overthrowing their boss and now it's just like oh our deal's done i i don't know it just didn't feel as cool yeah and because he's a weaker version of scar when he's feigning weakness originally as a kid you're watching that and you're like oh man i can't believe simba finally broke this this mastermind this evil guy <laughs> and and instead, now we're watching it. We're like, oh, he's just he's doing his thing. Like this yeah. is what a schemer would do. Yeah. It's not as like impactful. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like you're saying, when he gets thrown to the hyenas, it's not a great leader that's being overthrown by his his servants or whatever his fighters or whatever. He's just right. He's a nobody. He's yeah. He he hired them and ha- couldn't keep control of them because he lost his throne. So now it's like, all right, we're gonna eat you. Like, yeah, it wasn't as powerful as if they had built him up a little bit better. A little bit better acting with Jeremy Irons would be great, and uh, yeah. the you know voiceovers and stuff would have been a lot better, I think. And then uh, build up the character and the story better would be would be more impactful for yeah. those scenes. I think more ju- just more Jeremy Irons in general. Yeah. 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 Would you would you want to see Lion King too? I I personally I think we both liked Lion King too personally. So yeah, if they made a if they made a Lion King two uh, remake, then I, I would I would watch it. Um, I might as well get a Disney credit card because I'm gonna watch everything they get, everything they make. Right now, um, I like the. I wish there was a way like a movie pass, but just for Disney, I'd be set. All right, so in general, what you what would you give us out of uh, one to one hundred? Uh, to me, I was even talking about this uh, in the car with my wife. Uh, I think I'd give it a seventy-three. I know that's pretty low, uh, but there was a lot of a lot of defective aspects to it that were just falling short. So to be like totally honest and not not uh, be biased about how great the original was, but this one, uh, yeah, I'd do like a seventy-three. All right, that's a pretty good score. Um, I think I will go with. I had to go pretty close to that. I'd go at seventy-five maybe. 73 is oh, pretty pretty good. Yeah, I'll I'll go seven. Actually, you know, I'll just go 73 with you because that's that's about right. It was very lackluster compared to the original. I mean, it was basically the original. If you like the original, yeah. you'll enjoy this. It just won't be like revolutionary or amazing or anything like that. Uh, it's yeah. still going to be good, you know. It's, especially with all the hype that we had behind it because we were so excited to see. You know, we loved Lion King. We we're excited to see this one. It just it didn't meet the, yeah. the expectations that we built up for it. Excited for John Favreau and everything like that. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it for us this week. We will be seeing you tomorrow with some Comic-Con stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Geek Freaks Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Geek Freaks Pod. We're also on Facebook, Instagram. You can email us. We have our Patreon and a store 
All those links are in the description. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.